you have so many people out there in the world saying so many different things, promising so many different ways to get to heaven, uh, or to nirvana, or to paradise, or yeah, you have so many different religious leaders that are saying this is the only way, this way, yeah, but you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this, and uh, you have to pray five times a day at a certain time, or you have to make sure that you show up for church, and you have to give your tithe, and you have to do this, and you have to be a, a member of the choir, and you know, you have to be, uh, make sure that you're confirmed and you baptize your children and you, you pay your tax and you pay your tithe. And, you know, all these religious leaders from all these different religions in the world all telling you different things. And not one of them lines up with each other. They all, it's like they're all speaking different languages. You know, in the beginning when man got together and they created a tower, uh, that tower, they were... They were building this tower to reach the heavens. And, and man came together in one accord to build this tower. And they, they said that, well, we will build this tower and then we will reach the heavens and we will be God. And, and that word tower, if you look it up, translates into um, congregation, altar. It really has nothing to do with a literal tower. It has to do with man creating religion. And so God confounded their languages. You know, a Buddhist can't speak to a Pentecostal, a Pentecostal can't speak to a Baptist, a Baptist can't speak to a Mormon, a Mormon can't speak to a Quaker, a Quaker can't speak to a Catholic, a Catholic can't speak to a Protestant, a Protestant can't speak to a Lutheran, a Lutheran can't speak to a... Uh, and, and it goes on and on. There are so many divisions in Christianity today, and yet the Bible says so clearly there shall be no division in Christ. But yet we have all these denominations. And we know that there is only one truth, only one way, only one Father, one God. And if there only be one, and we have all of these other denominations, so which is the one? Which should we listen to? Which church should we attend? I think it is no coincidence that the religious leaders we see today are falling. I think it is no coincidence that we're seeing scandal after scandal after scandal. I think it's no coincidence that we're seeing radical religious people doing radical, terrible things. When did God and Christ become something that is marketable? When did God become something that is for sale? You know, the word is supposed to be bought, never sold. And yet, everywhere we go, we see merchandising. I mean, when Jesus walked into the temple, and when he walked into the temple, and he saw that the sacrifice was being sold in the outer court, he got angry. And he turned over the tables. And he said, you've turned my father's house into a marketplace. And when he walked inside the temple, he saw that all the choice seats were saved for all the important religious people. He got angry. Because the greatest of all should be servant of all. And when he saw the scribes and the Pharisees making long prayers and, and saying, oh, how much we give and look at what we do and leading everybody in prayer. He says they love to go around in this. When I turn on the television, I see people dressed up, dressed to the nines. I'm not, I, I don't know one man who calls himself a bishop that doesn't have some kind of bishop uh, outfit that he wears or, or, or a priest who doesn't wear a collar. In Jesus' time, <laughs> as the book says, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, you go to any of these big events where they have preacher after preacher after preacher, and guess what? You walk in, and in the lobby, in the outer court, guess what's being sold? Books on Christ. Oils that are supposed to uh, heal you, and, and uh, tambourines, and, and t-shirts. God is good. is 
is, is that when you walk into the outer court, what do you see? You see the sacrifice, Christ. You see the sacrifice being sold in the marketplace. You walk into the outer court, you walk into these lobbies. And today, you know, you have even, you have testament gum. And you have live strong bracelets that have turned into God strong bracelets. Many people are taking what man has done and they just put a spiritual a little godly Jesus twist on it and, and then they uh, turn a profit. Selling the sacrifice. There's no difference today. There's no difference today than there was many, 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 many years ago. It's the same. Go to any big Christian event and guess what? Those choice seats in the front row, well, they're saved for all the important people. You won't see someone who just walks off the street who's, who's, who's poor sitting in these seats. No, it's the pastor's family, the pastor's friends, or, or the, the visiting people that are about to preach. They're sitting in the front row. And then you'll hear these leaders making long proclamations and long prayers about how much they give and how important it is to give. You think God really needs your money? Well, the truth is, the whole system is going to come crumbling around. The Adam man, his days are numbered. In these days that we put our faith in ourselves and our self-effort and our self-will, and whether there's, oh, is there free will or there's no free will or there's this and there's that. You know, the debate rages on and on and on, but if God is sovereign and God is in control, then where does that leave us? If Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself, when are we going to wake up and realize that we can do nothing of ourselves? Hmm? When are we going to stop dwelling in the past and start dwelling in the now? When are we going to say, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives? When are we going to deny ourselves, as Scripture tells us to? Now remember, it doesn't say deprive ourselves. That word deny, look it up in the dictionary, okay? To deny something is to say that it is not true. It doesn't exist. So when you're denying yourself, you're saying, who I think I am doesn't exist. Why don't you stop going to your man-made church for one, one week? Why don't you stay home? Go lock yourself in a room with a Bible and ask God to teach you something. I guarantee you'll learn more in that one hour of silent prayer with God alone than you will have learned in the I don't know how many years that you've spent at church.